here and good to see all of you, uh, even on a computer screen. Um, we just completed our fall ball segment on Monday, had our last practice, had a good six weeks of fall ball. Now we're headed back into a couple weeks of individual skill sessions before the young ladies head home for the holiday break. Um, Signing day was yesterday. Uh, signed a class of six young women who we think uh, represent one of the most well-rounded classes that we've ever brought into Tennessee in terms of covering a lot of positional needs all over the field. Uh, so it, it's just been a, a good fall for us, uh, even amidst the, the circumstances that we're dealing with. So happy to take any questions you have. Okay, we'll start with Gustavo. Uh, hi, Hal. Hi, Karen. Uh, so nice to talk to you. I remember having a press conference with you, Karen, back in February, and then everything shut down. And how much are you going to bring for this season all the thing like the energy that was left over from last season, all the abruptly that was ended uh, last season, you know, how are you coming up to this season? And how was the preparation coming up to this season as well? Well, first of all, let me tell you, uh, we're excited about the team and we're excited about the preparation. Uh, you remember the 2019 season, we finished second in the league standings and had to go to Florida for the second time during the year. And uh, we ended up going three and three with Florida that year, winning two out of three in the regular season and then losing in Super Regionals in the eighth inning to go to the World Series. We have seven starters back from that team and a lot of newcomers that we're really excited about. So we think if we stay healthy, we'll be very, very competitive. Okay, we'll go to Rick Russo and then Jordan. Hey coaches, hope you're doing well. Um, you know, talk about the pandemic and everything going on. What, what has it been like? How has it been managing the situation in addition to coaching softball with your young ladies? Well, starting with the, the medical staff here and, and the leadership, I think they've done an absolutely phenomenal job of putting protocols in place and, and helping us all walk through that and, and do the absolute best we can. Our young women have done a terrific job of following those protocols. Uh, we haven't been overly impacted by it this fall. We've been able to have a, a pretty full squad out there most every day and uh, get a lot of work done. I think the biggest impact we've seen is just you know, the, the layoff in the summer and them not being able to be on campus in the summer and, and condition and train. And so we saw that when they got back to school late August versus September, just our conditioning level wasn't, you know, what it usually is at that time of year. So it's taken a while this fall to kind of build that back up. But, uh, you know, from a, a medical standpoint, uh, just couldn't be happier with the way, you know, the conference has dealt with it from a leadership perspective, our institution, uh, the medical task force here on campus, our leaders here on campus, uh, I think they've just handled it tremendously well. Ralph, is it, a, is it alarming to see uh, as you move through the fall what's going on, for instance, with football? There's several games uh, postponed for this weekend, and not just the SEC, but all across the country. What, what is your take on that when you see that kind of stuff going on across the country? Well, of course it's alarming, and, uh, you know, it's uh, – Seems to be getting worse right about this time, but I'm sure there'll be better days ahead and uh, we've just got to keep on keeping on and uh, try to do the best we can and try to be as safe as we can with our kids. And uh, I'm just very, very proud of the way our kids have dealt with this. Uh, of course, the holiday break for all teams, all sports teams all over the country will be a challenge. to talk about Megan Smith bringing her back as the pitching coach and then also kind of what that group has looked like over the course of your fall softball campaign. Yeah, Megan's been a great addition to our staff. Uh, Megan was a phenomenal player here, but somebody who you could see as a player was going to be a tremendous coach. Really a, a smart young woman, um, has a, an aptitude not just for the X's and O's of the game, but really getting to know the players on a personal level, build those relationships, but also a strong background in sports psychology. After she completed her four-year career here, she got her master's degree in sports psychology from Tennessee and just has a passion for that aspect of being an athlete and utilizes that every day in her coaching, not just with our pitchers and catchers, but with our entire team. So that's been a really neat thing for her to bring to us. And um, she just, 
is a, a learner, you know, a lifelong learner, um, always trying to grow in her game. Uh, one thing I always appreciated about Megan was even though she was a pitcher and has been primarily a pitching coach throughout her career, um, even the last 10 years, she's always been calling me and asking questions about slapping and defense and hitting and every other aspect of the game to become the most well-rounded coach she can be. So we couldn't be more pleased with uh, what Megan has brought to our team so far. And then could you kind of just also touch on that pitching room, what they look like early in the fall kind of uh, semester and fall softball? I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear the question. Oh. I just was, can you just touch on the uh, pitching room and what they've looked like throughout the duration of your fall camp? So the, the different pitchers? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Uh, so Ashley Rogers, you know, she would have been cleared to go at Texas A&M the weekend we got shut down. And that would have been her first appearance last season. So we played the 2020 shortened season. We played the entire time without her. So she's been back all fall. Um, has had a really good fall. Uh, so that's great for us, of course. Uh, Callie Turner got kind of thrown in there, thrown to the fire really quick last year as a freshman because of Ashley's injury. And she's improved tremendously this fall. We had several inter-squad scrimmages with umpires and the umpires that saw her last year and then came out this fall said, she's by far the most improved player on your team. So that was pretty neat for us. Um, Sam Bender returns. She got a, a share of the load last year with Ashley's injury. And uh, Anna Hazelwood is also back, another one who saw some innings last year in that shortened season. And then we've added a freshman, um, Bailey McCachran, a lefty, who's really opened some eyes uh, on our team this fall, has done exceptionally well in our inner squad scrimmages. So we've got five arms, two of them left-handed, three of them right-handed, and I think it's a, a really well-balanced pitching staff. I think we'll both talk about those. Uh, the two towers of power are kids that we have been looking forward to for the last three years. They committed early, and a lot of people made a run for them. They're both over six foot. They're both power hitters. One of them played for Mercado, who won the PGF National Championship last year, and the other one played for the Choppers. And I'll let Karen talk about the other three. Uh, you're going to want to get uh, that name Bateau down because I think you're going to be saying it a lot. Uh, Lair Bateau is an exceptional athlete and a really explosive softball player. She's a speedster, uh, but she can do it all. She's a lefty. She can play middle infield. She can play the outfield um, equally well. And she's just one of those players with that it factor that uh, can change a game with her her wheels, with her glove, with her bat, and loves to be in those pressure situations. Nicholas Simpson is a pitcher out of Seattle, Washington. Uh, has won many state championships up there. Is considered the best pitcher in that state. What I really like about Nicola is her um, intelligence, her attention to detail. At, at such an early age, she's very mature, and she understands that greatness is in the small things. And she's already um, searching for those tiny, tiny difference makers in her game. And, just a, a really neat young woman to have a conversation with. Uh, Katie Taylor, an outfielder from Noonan, Georgia. Again, a, a young lady with good speed, a great glove, and somebody who has power. She has hit a lot of home runs. She just won a state championship with her team down in Georgia. They play fall high school softball, and so she's still on a high from that state championship about 10 days ago. 
and has just always played in winning programs, whether it's travel softball or high school softball, really knows how to win. And then the, the last one that just came in this morning, Olivia Underwood, right down the road here. Uh, they call her Big O, not because of she's necessarily big, but she's got a big arm. Uh, she's a catcher, uh, just a, a really well-polished defensive catcher, really quick, uh, really athletic, terrific arm, uh, versatile enough to come out from behind the plate and play other positions and also hits the ball well. So, you know, like I said in my opening statements, we feel like it's a well-rounded class because we've got a pitcher, we've got a catcher, we've got outfield, we've got corners, we've got middle infield. Uh, we've covered a little bit of everything. Uh, but most importantly, you know, in our recruiting uh, of all the women who come to play for Tennessee, we talk to them about academics first and not just doing well in the classroom, but we're committed to them pursuing any degree they want and making sure that uh, we accommodate that so it can happen. And, and all of these ladies buy into that philosophy and are really, really motivated academically and ha have high dreams for their professional futures beyond Tennessee. And so when, when their priorities align with ours, you know, that's the best of all worlds. And, you know, to piggyback just a little bit on the uh, – academics uh, last semester we had the highest uh, team GPA on campus so we don't just talk about it we work it and one, one quick follow-up I think I missed one so is it a class of six and is, is this going to, is that complete your signing class you know, if Twitter was Ralph would get on Twitter maybe maybe I could keep up a you know, better updated list <laughs> Yes, it is a class of six. Uh, Lair Bateau, McKenna Gibson, Grace Keene, Nicholas Simpson, Katie Taylor, and Olivia Underwood. Well, I'll tell you, I am tremendously impressed by her leadership. It's, uh, it's, it's amazing how she gets out and talks to everybody. And when I first met her, I already knew about her from the coaches at Nebraska who told us what a great person she was, what a great leader she was, an administrator. And uh, it, it was at that meeting that she got introduced to Karen, and I'll let Karen take it from here because I think they have some things in common. She came out and spoke to our team um, probably about a week and a half ago now. And, you know, one of our captains at the end told her, they said, we're just so grateful to have a leader like you here on our campus because we've never had a chancellor, you know, show so much of a presence with our softball team. She's been out to visit our softball team twice since she's been on campus. And that's probably two more times than, you know, they've seen any chancellor in the last, you know, several years um, so exactly what you said Maria I mean she just that personal touch uh, people around here know that she cares uh, she's leading in the right way uh, we all know that it's it's about doing the right thing and leading with integrity the transparency uh, I, I just feel very blessed that she was here when COVID-19 hit because uh, the way she's led this campus through that is just phenomenal and I think it's the reason that we are where we are as a campus right now and doing as well as we are. Uh, she's tough when she needs to be. She's compassionate at the same time. Uh, people just know she cares and she's doing everything for the right reasons. So we're extremely proud to have Dondi Plowman at the helm here at Tennessee and to be working for her. Started back in October, and you know, I 
Any update on the scheduling? So I sit on the SEC uh, baseball softball subgroup that meets about every two weeks to discuss contingency plans due to COVID-19. And we talk about testing protocols and scheduling and roster sizes and all kinds of things. And in fact, I just left one of those meetings to come to this press conference. Um, nothing has changed. And there's definitely a sentiment that we don't want to make any changes until something forces us to. And there's a, a real feeling that, you know, the spring sports got the worst end of this deal last year in losing uh, the bulk of their seasons. So we want to try and do everything we possibly can to preserve those, the schedules. Uh, whether we get to play 56 games or not remains to be seen. But I think that goes along with Commissioner Sankey's philosophy from day one is let's be patient. Let's not jump the gun and make a decision too early before we know as much information as possible. This is something that's changing, you know, week by week, and we'll know a whole lot more January 1 than we do now. And so let's just uh, ride this thing out as long as we can. And there are two athletic directors on that uh, subgroup as well who feel just as strongly that they want to try and uh, let baseball and softball play their full schedules if at all possible. So. That's our goal. Again, whether we're, we eventually do that remains to be seen, but that's what we're going to keep trying to do. Okay, we have time for two more questions. Maria, you have the first one. One last question for me. I think I got all the newcomers on my list right. Kylie Owen, be, who will be freshman or transfer, Riley West, Ivy Davis, Kaylin Cole, Bailey, McCaffron, and Talia Thompson. I realize there's a lot more practice but who do you think, of those newcomers, who do you think can help right away this season? And did anyone in particular stand out? Well, we're really pleased with Ivy Davis. You know, it's kind of interesting. She's a transfer from Arizona. And uh, last year she played against us. And we had Arizona State and Arizona on the same day in the Arizona State tournament. So we threw our top pitcher against Arizona State and won the game and then had to go against Arizona, and Ivy went two for three against us in that game. She's a shortstop. She's an outstanding shortstop uh, in prep ball, and uh, she was playing first base for Arizona because their shortstop is leading the nation in hitting by an infielder and uh, got that year back. So anyhow, we went against uh, several teams to get Ivy when she got in the portal, and she's everything that everybody says about her. In fact, uh, fantastic defensive shortstop who can hit the long ball. Okay, 